Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews. I am your host, Matt Spies, and today we are looking at Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, released in 1988. Halloween 4 stars Donald Pleasance, Ellie Cornell, Daniel Harris, George P. Wilbur, Michael Pataki, Bo Starr, Kathleen Kinmont, Sasha Jensen, Carmen Philpy, Raymond O'Connor, and Gene Ross. Halloween 4 was directed by Dwight H. Little. Now, this film, from its inception, wanting to bring back Michael Myers, Mustafa Akkad had not wanted to give up on Michael Myers and wanted to bring him back in a big way. John Carpenter wanted nothing to do with this. In fact, his idea was far and away from what Mustafa Akkad wanted and uh, because he was wanting to send Michael into space. And Mustafa Akkad did not want the Halloween franchise to go in that direction. So, they went their separate ways. And a new director was sought out to direct The Return of Michael Myers. The original script by Alan B. McElroy had the character of Jamie Lloyd being named Brittany, Britty Lloyd, which uh, doesn't have the same ring as um, Jamie Lloyd, as, uh, as the name Jamie was uh, a uh, tribute to uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, and in the original script, they actually recapped the events from Halloween 2 and showed how Dr. Loomis and Michael both survived the fiery finale of Halloween 2. And I, I hate that that was never shot. They never did that. And I, I hate even worse that those hacks... Danny McBride and David Gordon Green ended up taking that iconic moment from that script in which Donald Pleasant's Dr. Loomis watches as these firefighters come in and start putting Michael out, who's on fire still, and he screams the whole line in the script of um, let him burn, and then they go and give that to Jamie Lee Curtis in this travesty of a trilogy that those two hacks did. But, since it didn't make it in, the rest of the script that Alan B. McElroy wrote was very, very good. Alan B. McElroy had to write this script on a short, short schedule because the writer strike was about to happen. So, considering the time constraints that he had on this, it is surprising that this script turned out to be so damn good. I mean, honestly, this is the best written dialogue, best written characters, and everything for a Halloween film, ever, in my opinion. The acting in this, the casting that, that, that was done for this film, of course, you have the returning Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis, of course, but then you have Ellie Cornell 
as Rachel Carruthers. And she is just so perfect in here. She is the epitome of a perfect final girl. She is amazing. I loved Ellie Cornell as Rachel in this film. She's totally likable, and she is super... Um, she's not gorgeous. She's that perfect girl next door type. And she just fit that role perfectly. And then you have Daniel Harris. Before this, she was on One Life to Live. And this was her first uh, big uh, film ever. And... Jamie Lloyd, she is just so good in this. I mean, she is such a good actress. And it it is the reason why this film has uh, stood the test of time and become such a cult favorite is because of the performances of these actors. And then, of course, you have George P. Wilbur as Michael Myers. George P. Wilbur um, wasn't the first choice that they wanted to use to play Michael in this. Tom Morga was originally brought in to play him, but uh, much like um, a later film that I'll be reviewing um, on this channel um, in the Friday the 13th series, um, he, wa he wasn't working out in the role. So they decided to make a change and they went with George Wilbur, which I think was a nice move. And there's still some scenes that have um, Tom Morgan in there, such as the shot where the camera pans in on Michael when he's standing and facing down Loomis in the uh, gas station cafe. And then there's Michael Patanke. And much like in Rocky IV, he is so good at making you hate his character. His Dr. Hoffman does not believe anything Dr. Loomis says. He thinks he's a crackpot. He thinks he's a nut job. And it's just, <laughs> he just infuriates you. And it's just a testament to how good of an actor Michael Patanke was that he is able to get that out of you. And then there's Bo Starr as Sheriff Ben Meeker. And he is the coolest freaking sheriff that they have ever had in any of the Halloween series. That, that character is just so badass. I just love Sheriff Ben Meeker. Son of a bitch, you just created a lynch mob. You haven't got a police force. These men may be the only defense you've got. Let's hunt this bastard. God help us. Totally good. Hey, I got a town full of beer bellies running around the dock with shotguns. Who's gonna be next? Somebody's wife, somebody's kid. I can't stand by for that. And then we come to his daughter, Kathleen Kenmont's Kelly Meeker. <laughs> I love the scene in which um, the character of Wade, um, Sasha Jensen's Brady's friend, whenever he makes his attempt at asking Kelly out. I just love that scene. Her daddy don't scare me. Off, Wade. <laughs> and then we have a couple of people that were just minor roles, but because of Alan B. McElroy's excellent writing of this dialogue, these characters and the excellent acting of these actors, these actors stood out in a film just for their little role that they had, and that is Carmen Philpy as Reverend Jackson B.C. 
Sayre of Dumont County. Pleased to make your acquaintance. How far are you going, Mr. Sayre? God's country, promised land. Where are you heading, Mr. Uh, Loomis? That character is so good. I mean, the whole ride with Loomis there is excellent. You're hunting it, ain't you? Yeah, you're hunting it all right. Just like me. What are you hunting, Mr. Sam? Apocalypse, end of the world, Armageddon. It's always got a face and a name. He should have gotten his own spin-off series of films, in my opinion. I think I think that character was that interesting. Oh, you're a pilgrim, all right. I saw it on your face back there in the dust. I saw it clear as breasts and blue suede shoes. Would you like a drink? And then you have Raymond O'Connor as the security guard at the very beginning. And his little monologue that he does recounting what happened in the first film. Yeah, the one you're picking up, just thinking about him. He gives me the willies. A decade ago, Halloween night, he murdered 16 people, maybe more, trying to get to his sister. Nearly got it, too. This scene is so good. His delivery on this dialogue is so good. But his doctor, of all people, shot him six times. Then he set him on fire. Both of them nearly burned to death. Yeah, I'll be glad to see this one gone. Yes, indeedy. It is such a good little monologue, and he performs it perfectly. Welcome to hell. And then there's Gene Ross as Earl Ford. Now, Earl is the leader of the town folk that um, decide to use their own little bit of vigilante justice against Michael. Let it be, Earl. Let the police handle it. Like the last time, how many people killed back then? How many kids? Al here lost his boy 10 years back. Well, not this time, Ben. I'll handle this my own way. Fry his ass. And this 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 character is he he's he's a good guy. I mean, he's tr doing things for the right reasons, but him and his screwball group of guys are just uh, they accidentally shoot this guy. <laughs> And the reaction to it after they realize it is priceless, just based on Ellen B. McElroy's dialogue. Shit, Earl. It's Ted Hollister. You dumb son of a bitch. You said you saw Myers. Donald Pleasance gets some of his best dialogue ever in the series history um, with... Uh, what Alan gives him in here. Six bodies, Sheriff, that's what I've seen between here and Ridgemont. A filling station in flames. I tell you, Michael Myers is here in this town. He's here to kill that little girl and anybody who gets in his way here. Donald Pleasance is better than ever thanks to the amazing dialogue that Alan has written for him in this film. Don't go to Haddonfield. If you want another victim, take me. Every time he talks, it is an excellent line. But leave those people in peace. Please. Michael. God damn you. And then let's get to that ending. So spoiler alert for all, any of you who've not seen this film, go watch it. Come on. Why are you just watching this review? Leave here, leave this review, go watch it, come back, and then I will uh, 
spoil this for you. I mean, this is this movie's been out long enough. You should have already saw it. But anyway, the ending to this one of the best endings in Halloween history. <laughs> That moment is iconic. The fact that they screwed that up and they did not carry over from that ending and capitalize on that for the next film, that's a travesty. Halloween 4, in my opinion, is the best Halloween film ever made. And I know that's can be debated and um, a lot of you might not agree with that. But I give this film a 10 out of 10. To me, this is the perfect Halloween. It's got the best dialogue. It's got the best characters, best acting. I mean, it is the perfect full-on film. And unfortunately, the Halloween series never got any better than this. As much as I love it, um, this, this, was, this was the high mark and uh, it never got any higher. But what do you think? Do you agree with my review? I know most of you probably don't. Um, but let me know in the comments down below what you think of Halloween 4. And as usual, if you like this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Because it really does help this channel out a lot. Anyway, as you can tell, this marathon that I'm doing this week is fours. So we will have another part four coming tomorrow. So join me and this little guy for this. All right.